All right, traders, welcome back. Uh, it has been a while since I made a video. Uh, I guess before I start this video, um, do want to apologize. I have not gotten out a January recap. Um, I was setting up to make one, but I just this market's so insane, and I've been so behind on tracking my PL that by the time I even got my PL together, uh, I don't even remember like half my trades, guys. Like I took so many trades in that in January that it's just such a blur, and, and February's been even more insane than that. Um, so sorry, we will pass on the January recap, but don't worry, I will do a February. I'll be on top of that. I'll make sure I'm on top of that this month. Um, but I will make up for it for missing January with this video lesson here or video here, which by the title, um, we are going to go over how I screwed up royally. Um, how I, I mean, literally took my biggest loss, like almost five X, um, of my previous biggest loss. So yes, that is correct. Um, you know. I lost almost ninety thousand um, dollars on this stock right here, MMN and and FF. Um, I have the trade here, you know, eighty eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Um, and I wrote in the trade, I said, "Shocked, I even let it get to this extreme, push my limits um, in this hot market." Um, but this time, I pushed it too far beyond my rules and strategy. I have never and will never trade like this again. And that's just this spot on. Um, I haven't reviewed this trade that much in depth. Besides that, that quick little, you know, excerpt. So, you know, me going over my trade right now will be pretty deep and in depth of me going over it for the first time with you guys. Um, Cause these videos not only help you, but they've actually helped me, you know, you may not realize it, but me going over my trades every month or, or many very kept videos I make, you know, it helps me a lot. So more than you guys know, then it helps you. Um, so yeah, I, I, in this very hot market, there's been a lot of great panic dip buys as what this setup was. Um, for those who briefly don't know what a panic dip buy is, you know, I'm looking for multi-day runners like MMNFF, um, ignored this first red candle. This is a miss for a, probably like some missed data, but, um, you know, we had one, two, three, four, like five green news in a row. And, and usually when that happens, I start looking for the first red day because usually then it, that leads to a panic and that panic then leads to the opportunity of a panic dip buy. Now, the last month or two, I mean, from OZSC, AITX, TSNP, um, ENZC, I mean, those are just some of the best ones. But I mean, there's been these incredible panics and bounces. Uh, and so I've been very aggressive on panic dip buys. I mean, I've been, last couple months, I've been making some of my biggest gains on the long side from panic dip buys. And I've been really sizing up on it. The liquidity is amazing in this OTC market. It's probably one of the hottest OTC markets we've seen. I've seen and ever, ever, um, many other veteran traders are also been agreeing with that statement. So I, I was pushing limits, right. And I was doing it, you know, aggressively, but still doing it safely. Like I wasn't breaking any huge rules. Like I was just being aggressive, um, and taking bigger risks. And a lot of these, again, a lot of these bounce plays were working, right. I didn't, I, it wasn't be, I never got put in a position where my me being aggressive got put to the test until MM NFF. Right. And, and so, um, I would say, I would think another aspect of me leading to this point was that I was very fatigued leading up to this. Um, if you watch our latest twist episode um, with me, Matt, and Jack, you hear in that video, this is the, this is, that video is, that podcast was made a day before I took this loss. And in that video, I have never sounded more tired ever. Like you can clearly see in the video, I'm exhausted. Um, and when you get exhausted, like your, your discipline your mental capacity to think straight and follow your rules and, and, and all that kind of can really can be dwindled down. Um, and that clearly was the case for me because when it happened today, I mean, I, all my rules, all my risk management went completely out the door. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how on earth I did what I did. Like, it's almost as if I wasn't, it wasn't me. Like Kyle didn't show up to the market that day. It was somebody else because I, again, I've never ever done something to this extreme and to this bad of rule breaking. Um, and it's a good lesson because I'll probably never do it again. Um, I know I'll never do it again because I, I can't believe I got myself to this point. So let me just briefly go over the trade and you'll see how bad it is. Um, <laughs> so panic dip buy, right? I'm looking for, you know, multiple panics, multiple minutes of, of panic, and I'm looking for a bounce play. Um, and so you see right here, right out the open, I mean, we, we literally panic from, you know, the 120s, 130s down to 90 cents. So at that point we're down you know, a good 20% and a 20, 20, 30% is when I start looking to dip by panics. If the level two starts to turn, which we kind of started doing there. Like you see this increase in volume. That's also what I look for, for a panic dip by bottom. 
Um, so I did buy, I started buying 100,000 shares at 90 cents, thinking we could then bounce to one buck or 110 and then fade off more. Um, and the moment I bought, right, I immediately knew I was, I was screwed, right? I just, the, the feeling of the tape, how heavy it was, um, you know, immediately we just, we just pull even harder. Um, and in hindsight, you know, buying on this ni at 90 here on this first turn was probably the biggest mistake I kind of made to get myself in that, in this position. Um, because I, I do have my trades here. I did take pictures of, of the intraday chart when I had, took the trade. Um, and something that people don't miss, maybe notice with panic dip buys is how far away VWAP is. Now, the reason why I want to know how far away VWAP is, is because the further away it is from VWAP, the better chance it has to bounce because it is so oversold, right? If VWAP, if VWAP is next to the chart all day or next to the stock all day, is it really that oversold? Because it's right next to the average price paid all day long, which is what VWAP is, right? Um, and so you see here, I'm buying a 90 for the first buy. And if VWAP is only like... 10 cents away. I mean, that is not, so yeah, we're down 20%, but the average price paid is like right there with it. <laughs> you know, we're not even, we're not even that oversold. Um, so buying a hundred thousand shares at 90 cents, like to start the panic or to start the buying for this bounce, like it's just, uh, I was screwing myself from the beginning, from the very beginning, right. To, to do what I did there. Um, and so then you ask, okay, why didn't you cut it, Kyle? Why didn't you, um, why don't you try to immediately start selling? Uh, and you're right. I should have probably tried harder. Um, one thing I will say is E-Trade lately has been very difficult filling. Um, some stocks are great. Some stocks I fill immediately. But I think with everything that's been going on with Robinhood and, and people switching brokers, many other brokers are overwhelmed with new clients, new customers. And, and I would say the order flow might be a little bit clogged because lately, last week or two on E-Trade, Sometimes I'm trying to trade these stocks and the fills are just awful. Like I know OTC fills are already awful, but they're even worse now. I mean, it's like sometimes E-Trade won't even, can't even accept an order of mine. So that's certainly not the reason I'm not blaming E-Trade why I took this loss, but it certainly doesn't help. Um, and so unfortunately I did get caught in this panic. And so, you know, the last thing I want to do is, is join that panic, right? Um, the last thing I want to do is get emotional and start joining that panic. And so I doubt that I'm like, okay, you know, you're, you got caught in this fake out. Let's see how it bounces and keeps going. Now, the biggest mistake that I made, I think through all this, this whole trade was that my risk management just left the building. Like I, again, I don't know how on earth or why I even got to thinking this was okay. Cause everyone, you know, you like, I've never added to a loser that's outside my plan to a trade. I don't even, I didn't even have a plan at this point, right? Like the fact that this keeps selling off and I keep buying more on every dip. Um, I have no plan, no risk management. And it's like, it, I'm just going downhill. And I, I still can't believe how, how I just accepted that. Um, cause every trade, I have a plan, trade plan, every trade, I have a risk level. Um, and this one, I just didn't. And I mean, and, and I, I also would say like, you know, looking in hindsight, like when this bounces here, into the into the 80s and it fails like right here should have cut it right there i, I clearly i give it i maybe i got caught in a fake okay that's fine you know that's not the worst thing in the world i don't want to panic out but when it actually then does bounce and fails you got to eat it i have to eat it right here you know what i mean um and i just didn't and i remember adding you know if you look back to my trades here my trades like i had here i had here <laughs> in the midday add some more it's like uh, the 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 thought that i was going to even have to take this size of a loss. Like it, I was so, I, I, I just can't explain it. Like I was so in another world. Like it's like literally the person I know who I am as a trader, like literally wasn't there. Um, and so you might think thinking like, how, how, how do you look at your, I have my PNL open. It's like, how do you not see it going from negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50? Like, how do you not, how does it not alarm you? Right? Like how does it not alarm me when that's happening? And, and something I've realized, I think, is the next level of, of a trader that I have to master is learning how to handle my P and L not in terms of being emotional about it. Cause I think a lot of traders in the beginning, I mean, every trade in the beginning at some level is emotional about their P and L, right? You hear this, you hear the saying all the time, like trade the chart, don't trade your P and L because a lot of traders have problems trading their P and L. I'm almost now I've gotten to the point where it's the opposite where I don't feel any ties emotionally to my P and L at all. Like, so yes, it's a gift in the fact that now I don't trade my PNL at all. Like I know I rarely ever feel any emotional ties to how much I'm up or down, but <laughs> you can see how this gets very 
very nasty very quickly where it's like I'm in this this is a perfect example where I'm far beyond my mask risk, mask risk, or max risk level I'm you know, don't have a trade plan anymore I'm way oversized and I'm just like sitting there okay with it <laughs> You know, like I, like I said, I'm, I'm watching this thing go from negative 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like that's just, just not acceptable. Like yeah, at all. Like I'm telling you, I will never forget this trade and I'll never let that happen again. Cause it's like, you know, yeah, I may not feel any emotional ties to the money anymore, but there's still a game to be played here, which is protecting, you know, your capital, uh, for following your trade plans. And, and again, this trade, I just threw that out the window, man. Um, you know, and it's, it sucks saying this cause it's like, the, you know, there's always someone out there who might see someone like, Oh, he had to do a loser. It's okay. I can too. Like, no, like this is just not okay. Um, it's embarrassing. Like the, the, how well I've traded for so long to, to have never even put myself even, even remotely close into this position. Um, you know, I will add to losers if it's still within my trade plan. Right, if I still have a good rest level, um, like I said, from the moment I didn't cut it after this bounce failed in the eighties, and we started fading just more and more and more. Um, I mean, my, my trade plan was non-existent, guys. Like I literally was now like just hoping it would bounce to get out, and hope's not a strategy, as you can see. Uh, and so you know, back to my trades, like I gave it all day. Finally, you know, into the afternoon, once I realized that this was not going to bounce, like reality set in. And this is when I finally kind of woke up a little bit and was like, okay, Cal, like you've made a massive, probably the, you know, the single biggest mistake, multiple mistakes in your career. Like if this breaks the low a day, finally, I now put a trade plan in place. Like if this breaks 50 cents down here, you have to get out. Like, you know, um, because again, I, I would keep going, I kept going back to the data chart of like looking, seeing how oversold we were. And I was like, I can't believe this doesn't bounce. Like this, the odds of this not bouncing is is so low. Like, like it's gonna bounce. It's gonna bounce. You know, just again, hoping, 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 hoping. Um, and finally, I realized, you know, if we go if we go lower than fifty cents, like I gotta cut it because again, this run had started from from literally twenty cents, lower than twenty cents, like fifteen cents. So to say it couldn't get back there is could be one of the most ignorant things you could do. Um, is to ignore that. So I said I can either cut it fifty. Or I can probably cut it at twenty or or ten, um, you know, your choice. <laughs> so, you know, I don't need to be losing any more than I already did, at the, than I already was willing to accept at this point. Um, so once we got to fifty cents down here, you know, right down here, I finally, I just ate it. This all this volume, like not all this volume, but a lot of this volume was me just just eating that loss. Um, and yeah, that I think it was going to come out to ninety, ninety thousand. Like no, I, I thought at the time, you know, when it was bouncing around this area, it was only like negative thirty or forty. Um, or 50 or so. So when we got, you know, again, when we, when we go 10 cents lower and I have nearly three, 400,000 shares, um, at this point, like, um, yeah, it makes sense how I got to that point. Um, so what I'm, what am I learning? Like what well, one is, I mean, Christ guys, it's like what I already know, which is the most embarrassing part, which is a trade plan, risk management, max loss you're willing to take. Um, you know, the view up thing, like, like I knew that I already knew that in terms of in, a stock needed to be very oversold away from view app to, to start buying, you know, regardless of how much is down in the day. Um, but again, like I said, the OTC market we had, we had been in was just so hot that I almost forgot that because it's, it's we got to the point where like, it was so hot that any panic I bought, it bounced, you know, I got spoiled. Like I, and I'm sure I, I, read, I, would, I read all over social media, like most people, a lot of people got burned on this particular stock because this was a true test of the market shifting, right? The first final, Panic dip buy happens and it's going to change. The market behavior is going to change and who is ready to adapt and immediately recognize it right away. Um, and I didn't, I know plenty of other people didn't. And, and, and even for the new trader who just is now seeing this type of action, I think it's why, why it's very upsetting for me is that I've seen this action before where a stock doesn't bounce. Like when I saw this, once I finally cut it and I just, I realized what had happened. I was like, Oh my gosh, this price action is back because this particular kind of a down day, has happened plenty of times, and which is why panic dip buys used to be one of the scariest setups that I, for me to play. Like, yes, I played them, and yes, I was profitable with them, but I was always scared about them because I knew any one of them could turn into this kind of price action because a lot of them used to. Um, so if you didn't cut it, you were going to be a bag holder, right? If you kept holding, you were not going to get out it cleanly or, or, or in a nice way. Um, so when I saw this action finally towards the end, I'm like, wow, this is back. You know, the market's changing. Um, 
And so going forward, yeah, like I need to be, I'm believe me, like max risk level trade plans, discipline, um, you know, stop losses, everything, everything's back on high, the highest alert you can have me be on, um, you know, and that's what you gotta do. It sucks. Right. But at the same time, this, the last thing I'm going to do is be poor me like, Oh, boohoo. Like literally I lost this big of a loss and my week on my profits on the week were still the best week ever. Um, the fact that I even have the privilege of, of losing that much is incredible. You know, like I literally started with $6,000, you know, almost five years ago. And so it's now five years later to take a loss. That's like nearly 15 X that starting capital. I mean, look how much I've grown. Um, so, you know, I don't think I left anything out that I thought about covering. Um, again, most of what you've heard now is me just talking myself through this. Um, you know, and, and so, and also I guess the same thing too, is that this is an F ticker, right? Uh, all those other tickers I mentioned at the beginning of this video that were such great bouncers, like they weren't foreign letter tickers. And if you've traded a foreign letter ticker before, um, they move differently. Like, yes, they are a stock. They still move similarly on a longer term time frame, right? But in terms of like price action on a one minute, you know, small, very short time frame, um, you know, price action for like specifically for a panic dip buy, like the F tickers are just different. Um, and so the fact that I even went as big as I did on the first dip buy of 90 cents, like most bounces on F tickers are not the smoothest things in the world. Rarely they are. So, like so many things aligned with this trade against where I was at in the current market environment prior to this this particular ticker. Like it makes sense in hindsight why I got crushed so quickly and so badly. Um, because it's like if the star, you know, it's like again, it's vice versa, guys. Like if the stars can align for me to have the best setup or the best gain ever on on my favorite setups, like they can all those all the stars can align surely for me be having the worst trade of my career. You know, it goes both ways and. Um, and that's what happened. So, you know, moving forward, like, you know, you've, you already say, kind of stated what I needed to do. Um, you know, I need to go back to rigorous risk management and trade planning and following my rules. Um, and yeah, moving forward, like just got to follow those. Uh, and again, I've, I've, and it's like, you and I ask, well, how does it feel emotion? Like painfully, like, does it hurt that I lost that much? And not as much as you think. Um, like I said, because I am grateful the fact that I even have that much money to lose in the first place. And like, it, you know, when I lost that much, it's not even, it wasn't even 10% of my capital in terms of all of my accounts that I could trade with. So yes, it was a huge hit, way bigger hit than I needed to take, but it wasn't detrimental, right? I, I gave back like one day's worth um, of gains. Like after I had other, I had other, you know, wins on the day. So after this $90,000 loss, I lost about a little bit under 50,000 on the day. Um, and I made 60,000 the day prior. So, you know, big picture, I lost one day's worth of games, still the best week of my career. So, you know, did it hurt that bad? No, because I've been cushioned by this market that led up to this particular play. Um, and again, I, I starting out, some of the losses I took were much more emotional than this one. Because like I said, I, I've, you know, in so many ways, removed myself from the PNL. You know, uh, for good and for bad, right? For good, like I said, of where I don't trade my PL anymore, but for bad, in that I have to recognize the number on my screen now. Like I have to, <laughs> you know, I have to make sure I'm, I know what I'm looking at. Uh, regardless of whether I feel anything, I need to make sure I just acknowledge where that number is. Um, so, guys, I mean, I could ramble on, on and on about this. Hopefully, you guys learned from something from it. Um, I know I sure did. Like, I can almost promise you, you'll never see something like this from me again. Um, you know, maybe, maybe my losses, of course, will always get bigger as I keep growing my accounts and having trading with larger capital, but to take this magnitude of a loss in accordance to how much capital I have, um, you'll, you'll never see that again. Um, it just, just so unacceptable. So anyway, guys, hope you guys learned some, um, let me know in the comments if you guys learned anything, or if you guys want to see more, maybe individual trade, um, recaps like this. Um, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys next time.